equals rho g h plus one half rho u squared plus p. And we get rid of p. So we don't have to worry about that. And then if we divide through by our constants, by density and gravity, then so you're basically dividing by 1,000 times 9.8, or 9,800, right? So we take our energy, so E over rho g is equal to the depth of the water plus 1 half u squared over g. And now we have an equation where our energy, if you go through, this ends up, the units here end up being meters. And it's sort of a, a it's meters where the meter isn't, it's a meter in depth, but it's not just depth. It's the energy in terms of depth, converted to depth measurement. Because remember we said we could add, by making the water deeper, we can add, we can make it, we add depth, it gets more energy. Same thing, except now we're adding a little fake depth that is related to the velocity of flow. So, um, and we call that, we use a capital H for that, and we call it total head. And the depth of the water is called head, is the name for it. And total head gives us the total energy in the stream just redone in terms of depth because instead of having to say, that's got 26,800 cubic, you know, joules of energy, you say, oh, it's got five meters of total head. It gives us nice, simpler number, which, and it turns out to be important. Okay, everybody got that? I'm seeing some confusion. Anybody confused by how this works? We're going to do some sample calculations. Okay. So, um, yeah. We can also um, now, okay, now I'm going to derive another equation based on that. And to do that, the first. This, we're just figuring out a way to uh, muck with the equation. Uh, we're going to take our total, our total head equation, and we're going to replace depth with discharge. And we're doing that because, notice what I've done here. Now I have everything has an H in it. So if we take our equation, so depth plus one-half velocity squared over gravity, and we replace velocity squared with discharge, the unit discharge of the stream. Actually, I better use a small q, because that's what we do there. Small q squared over h squared. So all we did is we took u and replaced it with q over h. And where q is for each meter of the stream from top to bottom, what's, what is the, um, how much water goes downstream? So in one cubic meter, you know, that's the velocity. And if I do the whole stream, that's the total amount of water and to get back to velocity, I just divide by the depth. Okay? So it's just a way, it's a way of mathematically rearranging it. So now, both of these terms have H in them. So now we're representing the stream as this equation now says that the total energy in the stream is equal to the depth of the stream, makes sense, right? All that potential energy, plus the amount of water per unit width going down the stream squared divided by depth squared. So 
Okay. Notice this is a quadratic in, in terms of depth. What if we were doing it as an algebra equation, it would be 1 over x squared plus x. Yes? Is there a suggestion from what provided from what the depth is? It's, uh, okay, the, the term we're putting in here is Q, and Q is the discharge per meter of stream. So you got a stream, it's uh, 30 meters wide. Well, one meter of the width of the stream, all the way from top to bottom, has a certain amount of water going down it. And we call that the unit discharge. So if you just multiply it by the width of the stream, you get how much water is going down the total stream. And that we use a capital Q, Q for. It. And so that's the, so Q divided by H by the depth of the stream is equivalent to the velocity. So it's just, and this is sort of a, a way what we're doing this, because now that's an equation we can solve. We can integrate or differentiate. Any questions on this one? All right. So, and, and we're going to do this because we can get, then get to a nice, very simple equation. Um, Okay, that's a quadratic in H, meaning it's x, you know, like if it was 1 over h squared plus h. So now we can differentiate it. And you guys remember from pre-cal or calculus differentiation. <laughs> so we can look at, and if you start putting this into English terms, how does energy change with change in water depth? Energy changes with change in water depth as a function of the velocity squared <coughs> divided by the cube of the depth. Or I shouldn't say velocity squared. The discharge squared divided by the cube of the depth. And all I did was apply standard differentiation to this. Remember... If you, did, if you differentiate x, what's the differential of x? One or a constant, right? So mm -hmm. a constant. If I differentiate 1 over x squared, what's that? 1 over x cubed, right? So that's where this equation comes from. Here's the x. There's the x cubed. Don't worry, you're not going to have to do this, but I want you to know <laughs> where we're getting this. So what, what this says, okay, now, let's put it back in terms of, now we've done this, we can put it back in terms of velocity. And when we do it, and remember, what's Q? Q is equal to U over H, right? Other way around. Yeah. U. <laughs> U equals Q over H. There we go. And so now, if I take and replace Q with U, I get rid of that Q squared, don't I? And I get rid of two of those three. And so now we end up with the change of energy with as water depth in a stream changes is equal to two, and the twos cancel, is equal to the velocity divided by the depth squared. Yes? Yeah, there is. Um, yeah, there, there is, and there should be, Felix correctly points out that I left out the minus sign here. No, that's pretty important, right? Uh, Which one no, because it, it depends on if uh, depth is changing positive or negative. Hmm. It, uh, I mean, yeah, it should be, um, but we we actually did it anyway. Oh. So, it turns out that um, you can look at depth changing positively or negatively, so it doesn't really matter. 
So when we get to the final equation, the one we actually use, we cut out stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, when we finish, so here is what that equation looks like. So if we hold, the first thing to do is let's hold, the inner, these are from an engineering text I found. And so we're holding the discharge in the stream constant. You can't change the amount of water going down the stream. And they're using Y as RH because they're weird engineers. And here is our total energy in the stream. So that's H. So as the cool thing is, so for energy to be the same, as energy in the stream increases, the depth of the stream can either decrease or it can increase. You can either increase the velocity of the stream or you can increase the depth of the stream. And we saw that, right? How you can have things that are have most of the water, most of the energy stored as uh, kinetic energy or most of the energy stored as depth energy. Um, and so for any energy in a stream, there are two states of flow. Two, um, two different equally valid points where the stream is stable. So there are two water depths and two velocities for any stream, except right there. And we call that the critical point. And we call the flow at that point critical flow. Critical mm -hmm. flow is where the point at which you can change the depth of the stream up and down a little bit without changing energy at all. Oh, it's time. Let's take a little break. Or should I finish? Let me probably should finish this and I'll give you a, mm -hmm. we'll do a shorter second one. I'll get you through the confusion before. Uh, so is everybody okay on the fact that there are two states of flow? All right, cool. We call the deep slow flow subcritical flow. We call the shallow fast flow supercritical flow. And so here is the final equation. That velocity squared divided by, notice this is how we got rid of the minus one, is divided by the depth is equal to one at the critical point. That's where we held everything. That's where the change in depth with change in energy is zero. So that tells us what the critical flow is for a stream. And this here is called the Froude equation, F-R-O-U-D-E, from a guy named Froude, not Freud, because he has an E in his name, right? Wait, what, how do you spell Freud's name? Same? F-R-E-U-D. A-U-D? E-U-D. Yeah. I thought it was different. Yeah, this is Froude. Anyway, um, the Froude number you basically take the square out of it, and so well, you take the square root of everything. Oh. So the Froude number is the velocity divided e by the square root of depth. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're just debating on the spelling of Freud. Yeah, Froude. <laughs> anyway. So, and so <laughs> when the Froude number is 1, you're at critical flow. When the Froude number is less than 1, velocity is small, depth is big, and you're in subcritical flow. When the Froude number is greater than one, you're in supercritical flow, which is when you fast. High velocity, low depth. So um, did I, I work you through that without too much confusion? Cool. We'll come back and we'll make a few calculations. Yes? I have a 